Hello there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In this episode, we are going to be building an image pop-up expansion image. Where is it? I should have prepared. Ah, <laughs> let me pull it up on the screen. There we go. So this is what we're going to build. We have some images and these are pretty low quality. So they're around 30 kilobytes. So they're going to load super, super fast. As you can see, it's pixelated and I made it like this on purpose, believe it or not. Uh, because you can close this up like this and it's nice and responsive. Now the beautiful thing about this, again, that these are a super small size, but if you want to get the full quality, you also have this nice little animation, but you can click it and you're going to also have this nice animation with the preview text down here. And these all change dynamically. So as you can see, if I click on this one, it changes. If I click on this one, it changes and it gets the full source quality. So if we take a look at this and I press F12 and we're going to take a look at this one, it says image preview 640 by 426 pixels. But if I click on it and now if we check on this one, take a look, it's full 1080p HD Ultra Blu-ray. Okay. Let's open up VS Code. That's where you do things. So <laughs> here it is. There we go. So where do I get the images from? From the internet. I go to pexels.com. Now here's how you do it. You can follow along, you can get any images you want. I went for the nature of photography. And what I did was basically I clicked on an image, I went to free download, and I got the small one and the large one. You can go original if that's what you please, but I got this one and this one, uh, this one, yeah. Okay, so get these two and do it for like three or four images. And then what you do is you drop them into a folder. Wow. Web development is so fun. I want to cry. Okay. So basically I have a folder here that I'm going to copy and paste and cheat. Okay. So these are the full quality images in the full folder. And then we have a preview images. Okay. And I kind of named them the same way. So flock of birds, full flock of birds, preview. Landscape Mountain Preview, Landscape Mountain Full. Doesn't, re doesn't really matter, but I like to stay organized, okay? Don't blame me. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is close up the computer and open up Apex Legends. All right, let's play it. I'm joking. Um, so let's create the index.html. You say shift one tab, boom, auto generation, full. Then we're going to write image gallery, expand, expand your HTML. Okay. So here, what we want to do, let's also create a style.css and an app.js to get everything nice up and running. So the way you link it is you go here and you link it. You say link, you hit tab dot slash style.css. Good job. You're a developer now. Then you go down here and you write script. And here you don't write link anymore because logic of people who created this, you write source. All right. So here we have the relationship and here's where we're cheating. Dot slash app.js. Hit save and go here somewhere in the middle. Okay. So the thing I want to do is create kind of like a container for the images. So I'm going to create a div with, if you write the dot here before and you hit tab, ah, sh shit, <laughs> you hit the tab, it's going to give you a div. Wow. Now in here, what I'm going to do is actually add it to a container. Now, the reason why I'm going to add it to a container, another div basically, is because I want the image to size up when I hover over it. So it grows. And basically, I want to add overflow hidden to this so it doesn't go out of the grid. You're going to see what I'm talking about. You don't need to know. Image container. Okay. And here is where we drop our previews. So dot slash, we can go to previews and flock of birds. And here you can add your alt. You should add all of these because we're going to be using this. This is a flock of birds. Okay. Hit save. 
And now what, all, what else we need to do is add a data original. And what this data thing is, is basically you can add an attribute in HTML with whatever you want. In this case, I want to retain a piece of information, uh, which is the full size image. Uh, what is it called? Uh, the source of it, the source of the full size. So what I'm going to set this equal to is um, I'm going to just write flock of birds dot jpeg uh, the full dot jpeg okay so i'm just basically adding the original name here and that's it now what we're going to do is copy paste this container how many do i have four so one two three four okay and now all we're going to change is everything in here and just add the new ones so dot slash Previews, landscape. Landscape is the only escape. Okay. And here, again, we can kind of just copy paste this. And what I'm going to do is just write full here. Wow. Amazing. And let's also do to these. This is where web development gets really interesting. You can just feel the excitement. Nature of sky. Wow. Okay, that's enough. No more. Here, we're going to copy paste everything again. Well, not everything. We don't want the previews. We just want nature sky full JPEG. And finally, the last one dot slash previews. That's the one. Night is when you get love okay and here copy pastarino like that and we're going to change this to full perfect so we're almost done so we're going to style this up a bit in css and then we're going to add the model 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 so let's open this up in live server here's what we got okay just four preview images fancy very nice so let's go to our style.css. Now here, what we're going to do is just kind of remove, it's going to be like 20 lines of code. So nothing too bad. Margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing, border box. All right, again, this just kind of removes all the basic styling of all the elements because star is everything. That's what, what, that's what we learned in school. We weren't paying attention. Go back to school. Okay, so gallery. We're going to grab that gallery and I'm going to display this grid. Now flex, we flexed enough. It's time for some grid. And here we're going to do the magic. And this is the magic code that you need to remember forever. If you want to ever create a fluid kind of responsive grid of some sort, this is what you write. And you always write this repeat auto fit. All right. And then here you add a min max. 400 pixels and one FR. What does this mean? All right, so this is what we have. Take a look. Wow, it's amazing. We still need to do something because this doesn't work. Uh, we need to grab the image container and let's grab the image container image. So the actual image inside the container. So if I had a width of 100, a height of 100 to stretch it all the way out, this is what we get. Okay, so it kind of sizes to that grid. Now, what I can also add is a object fit cover. And the reason why I do this um, is so, hey, my mouse blocked. The reason why I do this is so when it resizes, it's still nice looking. Okay, what we also need to do, because we're not done yet, Let's go here to the image container. Let's go to the gallery actually and add a min height to it. 100 VH. Okay, so now it actually stretches out nicely. Very nice. Okay, because when we didn't have this, it would just take up whatever space there was here of the image container. So if I add this, it basically stretches it out to 100 VH. 
Okay, I also like to add a grid gap of two rem to give a bit of space in between. Okay, so what does this thing mean here? Repeat. Okay, so basically what you can do with this, with the repeat, is, well, you can add one FR, which means that it takes up the whole space, all right? So each image take up, takes up the whole space. So if I want two of them, like this, you add one FR, one FR, and then they take up equally the, the equal amount of space. Now, sometimes you want to have more, so you write one FR, one FR, one FR, so you want to have three. Uh, and this gets a bit tedious, so you can write repeat one FR, one FR, three. Is it like that? It's not like that. Damn it. It's three times one FR. Is it like that? Yeah, it's like that. So it's kind of a shortcut. Now what we do is we say, hey, do it yourself because I don't want to do it. So we say auto fit and then we add a comma and we write min max. And here we can basically min max, we can specify when it should jump down to a new row and it, it kind of becomes fluid. So if I write 400 pixels, dash one FR. So basically it stays 400 pixel pixels, but as soon as it doesn't have enough space anymore, it jumps down, down, it jumps down <laughs> and it takes up one FR. All right. So as soon as it doesn't have enough space anymore, it just goes to one FR. And if it has space, it just goes to 400 pixels. Now you can customize this the way you want. So if you don't want this to be seen like that, well, what you can do is you can make this smaller, like 200 pixels or 100. Excuse me. I need to up this number to like 800. All right, so now it's like that. If I want even more, I can do more, 1,500. And look at that, wow, amazing. So you can kind of play around with this. I'm just gonna leave it at like 400 to kind of get this look. And then, yeah, it resizes nicely. Okay, so the problem well, not really a problem, but what I want to do is go down here to the gallery. I'm going to get the image hover. Wait, which one is this gallery? Well, it's, it's this one. So image container, image, I can add a hover on this and I can basically say transform scale 1.2. Okay. So basically when you hover over, this is exactly what happens. It grows like that. Let me expand this. Ah, it's a tragedy. Okay, let me just make it like this. Okay, so look at that. It expands and it leaves the, the thing. So this is why we added the image container because I can add an overflow hidden to it and now it just stretches out inside that box and it still maintains everything nicely. Now it looks terrible. So what we need to do is go here to the image and just add a transition all 0 0.3 seconds ease out. Hit save. And there we go. Now we have a nice little animation. We can also add a cursor pointer because this is going to be clickable. There we go. So cursor pointer. Am I in frame? Let me check. I'm in frame. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the functionality here that we need. Now, what we need to do is add a model. Modal, model, modal. So we can go to the index and just add some shit here. Okay. What I'm gonna do is just create a model. And in here, I'm gonna have the image with the full size. Now I can leave this off. If I want, I don't really need to add a source to it. You can add the alt tag if you want, if you're not lazy. And I'm going to add a class to this as well. Let me scroll down. Class. It's going to be model image. Okay. And hmm, let's just do full image. That makes more sense. Okay. And then I just want to have a P tag. So P and this is going to be a caption class. And again, we're going to add crap here in just a bit. So that's it. This is just a super simple model that we have here. Now we don't add an X button to close it because that's awful. You don't want to do that. Screw your X. Um, it's more nice if you just click off the image. 
I'm gonna show you in just a bit. Just be patient, damn it. Um, okay, so let's go here, <laughs> here and start adding this thing. Okay, so we're gonna get the modal, the modal, and we're gonna add a background, a knuckle girl, a background, why you do this, of RGBA. Now, why we use RGBA and not RGB? Well, the reason why is because I want this to be black, so I'm gonna say zero, 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 okay? But if it's black like this, we cannot see anything. So we can basically lower the opacity to like 0 0.6, 0. Point whatever here. Uh, so we can kind of see the content in the back. So now I want this to be on the top. I like to be on the top. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna add a position fixed. So fixed, I'm gonna say top zero, just cover the whole thing. This is always how you cover the whole thing. Top zero, left zero, and just add the full width and the full height, okay? Hit save arena. Okay, so it covers everything like that. Okay, now why didn't I do it like this? RGB, zero, zero, zero. Or just black, right? Oh, no. Eh, I just do black. Save, all right, and then I go opacity, 0 0.6. Wow, it looks like it works, doesn't it? It doesn't, trust me. And the reason why it doesn't work doesn't work, English please, is because when you add the image on top here or you add some text on top here, so let me, let's illustrate that. Wow, amazing. Where's the text? I'm gonna add the text just so you can see in just a bit. Um, look at this, let's do this. I'm gonna get the model P, I'm gonna add a color of white, font size of two rem. I'm gonna position this absolute and just add bottom, 5%. This is what I found that works nicely and left 5%. So here it is, okay? Never mind, that works. <laughs> I'm stupid. Oh no, I'm stupid. It does work. Okay. Why though? Because I added opacity to this, so it should make everything here transparent. That's strange. Does it? Am I just blind? Yeah, see, the text is gone. I cannot see the text. Well, well it's white here, so that makes sense. Let's just make the text black here. Okay, so as you can see, you cannot see the text. It's gone because we added opacity zero. So what we do is we don't add opacity zero because it, because it affects all the elements here. So the image is gonna have an opacity of zero and the P tag is gonna have an opacity of zero. So we remove this and what we do is we just say RGBA and we add zero, zero, zero. And this is only gonna affect the background. So as you can see, we can see the text now. And if I increase this 0 0.5, there we go, we can still see the text. Whew, I wasn't wrong, thank God, because that would have been weird. Color white. So we're gonna switch this to white again. I'm gonna leave this at 0 0.7 or 8. And the funny thing is, we're still gonna hide this thing in just a bit. So we're gonna add opacity zero to this back. Just because when we click on an image, we want it to pop open. But right now it's closed. So let's just get the text here. Now, as you can see, this is not centered perfectly, even though we said, hey, be left 50% from this whole window, right? So it should be 50. Well, it is 50%. So if you take a look at the middle, all the way down, it's perfectly 50%. However, we, we have more text just going. So if I add more text, it's gonna go all the way here. So what we need to do is grab this element, this text here, and just move this back by 50%. So the length of this text, move it back by 50%. So you're always gonna see this. If you wanna center something with position, blah, blah, blah. You just say transform, translate, and you move it back like this, minus 50%, minus 5%. Okay, and that's perfectly, perfectly gonna center it now. So that's good. Okay, so we have the model P. 
Uh, I should just add something here, an image, just so we can kind of see. And I'm just going to add the first full image quality, just so we can kind of style this up. OK, so model P. What else do we want to do? Let's see. Model. Let's just get the full image. I'm going to just add position absolute to this again. Again, center this. I'm going to make the height a bit smaller, 70%, like that. And then top 50%, left 50%. So again, same thing happens. It's not perfectly centered here because we need to move back the image's size by 50% back. Ah, CSS, why you do this? Transform, translate, minus 50, minus 50. Okay? And there we go, it's in the centers. Wow. Now I also want to scale this down just for some animation. So I'm going to say scale 0 0.5, like that. And when we pop it open, it's going to expand. So let's just add that now. Full image dot open. All right, I'm just going to basically append a class on top of this. I'm going to say transform, translate. We can copy this whole thing over like that and just scale it back to one. And let's also add a transition to this because we want to see this transition. <laughs> I'm going to say all 0 0.25 seconds ease out. Okay. So when we click now, this we're going to add this class and it's going to expand. Do I make any sense? I don't know. Okay. And now we also want to have one up here. So on the blackness. <laughs> so what we want to do when we click on the image, uh, this fades in, this darkness fades in just like in my life. Okay, so basically here as well, we want to have a model open, model dot open, and I want to have the opacity of one here, and pointer events of all. And here I'm going to add the opacity of zero, and pointer events of none. So what's this whole thing? Well, opacity zero basically we cannot see it anymore, but pointer events basically allows us to click on things. So if I remove this, even though opacity is zero, as you can see, nothing really happens is because it's still here. That, that thing is still here, the model, as you can see. So I'm not actually clicking on the things that I see on the screen. So what this pointer events does, it hides the clickability of those things. Now, you might also see that you have display none, which kind of does the same thing as we did here. But the difference is, is that we cannot animate display none to display block. All right. So, but we can animate the opacity back to one for the animation. Oh, it's so hot here. <sighs> okay, so that's it. I think that's that's the whole thing that we need. I don't think I missed anything. If I missed anything, then it is what it is. Okay, so let's close everything up and let's go to app.js. Now we're just going to select everything here. So cost model, modal dot query selector. I'm going to grab the model. <laughs> and we're going to grab the previews. I'm just going to say document dot query selector. Make sure we have all here because I want to select all the preview images. I'm going to say gallery image. All right, so these are the the actual images here. So I want to select those two as well. Cons the original images. Original. Here I'm just going to say, what is it called? Full image or something? So this one image here that we are going to change dynamically. Full image. Ah, oh, my nose is itchy. Document, query selector, full image. And lastly, the text. So I'm going to say image text. Document dot query selector. This is called caption. Caption. Make sure you add the dots here because we are selecting classes. And here at the previews, again, make sure you select all because we have multiple images. Because what we're going to do is loop over them. So previews, all right, so I'm grabbing all the image previews here and I'm looping over them. So I'm going to do for each. I'm going to add parentheses for each preview. I'm going to add a equal sign and bigger than sign, curly brackets, and open. So basically, we're running a function on all of these images. So what I want to do is attach a click event to all of them. So I'm going to say preview, add event listener, and we're going to listen for a click. Again, so basically, we're looping over each preview 
And here we're adding a click on each preview. And whenever we click on something, we're going to want to run another function here. So I'm going to do the parentheses equal bulk, bulk. Okay, let's not swear. And in here is I can do this, the stuff that I want to do. So the first thing I want to do is model class list add open. So if you remember, we had that class that we made here is when we open, where is you? Yeah, but we basically want to add opacity of one, right? So we add the class list to the model of open. Okay, let's see. There we go. It works. Very nice. Click. Nice. Click. Okay, it's time to stop. So that's good. Now it doesn't really open all the other images, which we're going to fix in just a bit. Why doesn't it? Hmm. There's something wrong. There's no transition. Did I add a transition model? Oh, here, we don't have a transition. Transition, 0 0.25 seconds ease, out, save. Make sure to add this to the model. Click, there we go, now it transitions. Beautiful, wow. Okay, but now we wanna close it. So before we move on and add a lot, bunch of other stuff, Let's close it. So what I'm going to do is just grab the whole modal like that and add an event listener to this as well. On click, parentheses, same thing that we did up there. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a check to check what I'm clicking on. So the way you can get that is you can add an event here because every time you click an event happens and a bunch of things happen and you can have access to those, that information with the event here. So if I console log out event, it's going to tell us what happened. So you can go here to the console, click on this. All right. So if I click now, as you can see, oh, a mouse event was triggered and you have all of these different things that you can use to do stuff. So in this case, we can use the target and we can make sure to basically only close this whenever we click on the black part of the screen and not when we click on the text or on the image. You don't want to have a little X button there, and then you're going to have to go and find it every time and click on that. That's just annoying. So we're not going to be using that. So basically what I'm going to do is say if, and I'm going to do a check e.target. All right, this is basically whatever I'm clicking on. And I'm just going to check if it has a class list and it contains modal. And if it contains a modal, then I'm going to say modal class list dot remove open. Okay. So now if we check, click. All right. So if I click here, it's the image I'm clicking on. If I click here, it's the text I'm clicking on. But as soon as I click here, that's the modal that I'm clicking on. So it just closes nicely up. Wow. Technology evolving right before our eyes. Okay. So we're opening the thing. Let's also add the animation there. We can grab the original like that, class list, add open. Let's see. There we go. So now that pops up as well. Now it doesn't pop up anymore because we also need to remove it down here. So original, remove open. Okay. Bam. Bam. Very nice. The problem is we still have static text here and static image. So what we're going to do here down here is dynamic change text and image. Okay. So what I'm going to do is say const original source like that and set this equal to preview. So I'm going to access the preview. And if you remember, we added these data tags on it, data original. Right? So I'm going to access that information. So on the preview, whatever I'm clicking on, I'm going to get that thing's data. So preview dot get attribute. This is the way you get it. Data original. Okay. So now whatever I'm clicking on, if I just console log this thing out, original source, if I just console log this thing out, you're going to see, click, look at that landscape mountain full flock of birds, full night sky, full. So now I have the source for the original quality. So what I need to do now is basically grab the original image and just add a source 
and set this equal to, I'm gonna do backticks here. Should we keep it simple? Let's just do backticks. I'm gonna say dot slash full. I'm gonna navigate to this directory here, full. And here basically I wanna add this original source. So I'm gonna do dollar sign, curly brackets, and paste original source. So this is how you add a variable inside here, okay? And that's it. So basically we just navigate to the folder. Now, in theory, you could have just made it here. You could have done something like this, dot slash full slash flock of birds. You could have done that as well. And then here you would just add original source like this, original source. And that would have been fine as well. Well, we're doing this because we're crazy. Okay, let's see. So we're dynamically updating. Well, that doesn't work. Flock of birds is not found. <sighs> Let's see. What's wrong? Flock, don't I have a flock of birds? Oh, it's flock birds on this one. Fine. Flock birds save. Okay, there we go. Nice. Let's do the same thing to the text. So here, I also want to show you how you can access the alt text. So I'm going to say const alt text is equal to preview.alt. That's how you get it. This thing here. So now I have access to that as well. And we can just add it to the caption if we want to. So uh, do we have caption? Do I have the caption? Image. Oh, okay, let's just name this caption. Okay, so caption dot text content. I just want to change the text content to the alt text. Save. Let's witness the flock of birds. Wow. Amazing. So thankfully we're done with this. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. I'm running hot here. It's an incredibly hot day, but also rainy for some reason. Come with me. Let's go a bit outside. Screw the development. Go. So nice. Ah, this is so strong. I'm struggling so hard here. Look at that. Nature. And we're stuck inside here. Yeah, because of the coronavirus. Yeah. It's raining. I'm going to play Apex Legends. Goodbye, everybody.